Thank you so much, Chiron. I trust you appreciated all of the exaggerations about my life. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> What an extraordinary evening. This is, the, the most, this is the most, the greatest life memory of any of our extraordinary galas we've ever had, uh, not only because of our great honorees and our great speakers, but also the honor of having the greatest friend that Israel's ever had in the White House with us, <laughs> President Donald Trump. <laughs> 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 and too many of us in this room forget he was also one of the greatest presidents for the United States of America in the White House. <laughs> All of you simply by being here attending this extraordinary superstar historic gala shows that you're a strong, proud, all of you, courageous activist Zionists. You are as committed to and love the Jewish state of Israel as much as the ZOA does, as much as President Donald Trump does, Jason Greenblatt does, General Avivi, Miri Adelson, Dallin Dershowitz, Joe Lubeck, Ali Melli, Stephen Sass, Myron Zerman, and Dr. Chiron Skinner. Uh, you in this room are all, and I mean this from my heart, pro-Israel honorees. Thank you so much for being here. <laughs> <laughs> As many of you may know, I have Tourette syndrome. I make sounds I can't control, and you've just heard an example of that. Uh, uh, that's one of the reasons why the first woman who showed any interest in marrying me, I said yes immediately. <laughs> I did not want to live alone. <laughs> Thank you, Rita. <laughs> <laughs> I, I make a joke and I tell people I had to marry someone who was both deaf and blind. And people said, really, that's very kind of you to marry someone like that. I think it's true. <laughs> With your support, uh, ZOA fights for Israel through our great Center for Law and Justice headed by Susan Tucky. ZOA fights for Israel through our campus programs and over 100 campuses led by Jonathan Greenberg. To Ginsburg, ZOA fights for Israel through our government relations program on Capitol Hill led by Dan Pollack and by holding an annual lobbying mission every day for our supporters to meet members of Congress in their stands. ZOA fights for Israel through our student and adult trips to Israel and our powerful writings in the media, our appearances on TV and radio and lecturing throughout the country, even throughout the world. <laughs> ZOA is virtually alone, virtually alone in pushing back publicly <laughs> against <laughs> and criticizing the unjust and unfair and irrational hostility some U.S. administration people and members of Congress display toward the Jewish state. This very week, the administration and some members of Congress have railed against the second largest party that would become part of the Israeli government, the Religious Zionist Party. By exaggerating and misrepresenting their policies, many of which were held decades ago and since then have been abrogated. <laughs> but these same U.S. officials were and are deafeningly silent when a radical Muslim Brotherhood Party, Ra'am, was part of the previous Israeli government. Ra'am opposed the Abraham Accords. Ra'am opposed the Jewish state. Ra'am calls Israel racist, one of the 300,000 Jews out of Judea and Samaria. But America didn't condemn Ra'am. These officials didn't condemn Ra'am. But they condemned the religious Zionist party. Furthermore, America didn't protest when radical Jew hater Mohammed Shteya was appointed as the prime minister of the Palestinian Authority a few years ago, a man who glorifies and praises terrorists and terrorist attacks, a man who's against Israeli Jews being in the Middle East, who urges sanctions against Israel, accuses Israel of war crimes. America didn't condemn Mohammed Shteya but they condemn the religious Zionist party? <laughs> and America doesn't condemn <laughs> or refuses to deal with the Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas, who pays Arabs lifetime pensions to murder Jews 
and they still work with him and praise him, <laughs> who names hundreds of schools, streets, sports teams, and children's camps after Jew killers, but the, this administration still deals with him and praises him. <laughs> a man who's refused to negotiate and who refuses to accept Israel as a Palestinian state. A man who has turned down every offer for statehood <laughs> without a counteroffer. And yet this administration deals with Mahmoud Abbas and praises him as a moderate peace seeker. America won't condemn Mahmoud Abbas, this monster, this monster, this terrorist, this killer. But America condemns the Israeli Religious Zionist Party. This unjust double standard by the United States must be condemned publicly and must end. <laughs> and moreover, U.S. officials are not only silent, but they praise Jew-hating Israel bashers in Congress, like Ilan Omar, Rashida Tlaib, AOC, Cori Bush, Jamal Bowman, Betty McCollum, yes. <laughs> <laughs> These people promote boycotting Israel, divesting from Israel, sanctioning Israel. They call Israel an apartheid state. They demand cutting Israel aid and say Israel is no ally. Speaker Congresswoman Pelosi took a picture with these Jew haters for the front page of Rolling Stone magazine. Never criticized them, honored them. <laughs> President Biden, and I'm sure you don't know this, he praised Rashida Tlaib in a recent speech saying, quote, I admire you, Rashida Tlaib. I admire your intellect, your passion, your concern for people. You're a fighter, Rashida Tlaib, and God thanks you. What a disgrace. <coughs> what a disgrace. <laughs> and the Jewish world was silent. Zioe, of course, publicly condemned President Bush for this disgraceful display uh, of praising a terrorist. <laughs> President Biden, I've been up since very early this morning. <laughs> but the members of the Religious Zionist Party are condemned by B Secretary Blinken. <laughs> uh, uh, member, uh, Mr. Sullivan, Biden himself, they're condemned as extremists. <laughs> we lovers of freedom and justice in Israel must demand these Israel haters suffer consequences for their anti-Jewish bigotry. They must be removed from every committee on which they serve. <laughs> and turning ZOA, I'm proud to inform you, since we're here with the great President Donald Trump, <laughs> who, as we know, moved the, the embassy to Jerusalem after President Clinton said no, President Bush said no, President Obama said no, despite U.S. law passed in 95 requiring this. I must tell you, it was ZOA, alone among the Jewish group, who alone initiated and worked with the great Senator John Kyle of Arizona <laughs> to write and put together and work on the Jerusalem Embassy legislation to move the embassy back in 1995. Ladies and gentlemen, no Jewish group initially supported this. They were against it. And no Jewish senator supported it. They were all against it. Say it will cause violence and the peace will become impossible. <laughs> only President Trump understood. Not only was it the right thing, <laughs> but there would be no significant response and there was not. <laughs> they didn't want to upset President Trump, who then would do, give them serious uh, difficulties. <laughs> they knew that that would happen with a man like President Trump in office. <laughs> <laughs> and why aren't Jewish leaders and Jewish groups and Israeli leaders and the, Amer the Jewish media telling the truth of the Jewish city of Jerusalem that President Trump recognized as the undivided capital? I believe a factor that they're not telling the truth of this city is a factor in the rise of Jew hatred because we don't tell the truth and expose the truth about the lies about Jerusalem, settlements, occupation, the Palestinian Authority, President Abbas, and the Palestinian terror state. <laughs> is Jerusalem holy to Muslims? 
It was the capital under King David 3,000 years ago. Never the capital of any nation except Israel. If you notice, we call it the Temple Mount, not the Mosque Mount. It was the Jewish temple there. Since the first census in 1840, the majority of people living in Jerusalem have been Jewish. <laughs> the Jewish holy books mention Jerusalem 700 times. It's never mentioned in the Koran. I don't curse, ladies and gentlemen. But if Jerusalem is so damn holy to the Muslims, why isn't it in their Koran? <laughs> because they have a holy mosque there. The city itself has never been holy to them. No Arab leader except from Jordan ever visited Jerusalem from 48 to 67 when the Arabs controlled it. <laughs> an occupation. Is there an occupation? Occupation means you illegally stole someone else's sovereign land. This was never sovereign Palestinian Arab land. Uh, Arab land. There was never a Palestinian state. It's a region. And by the way, Palestine, this is an Arab land, Palestine. Why is Palestine a Roman word? If it's an Arab land, why didn't they name it after an Arab name? Because it's the Romans who captured it from the Jews who named it Palestine, a Roman name, after the Philistines to stick it to the Jews. This was never an Arab land. In fact, the Palestinians can't even say Palestine. Arabs can't pronounce the letter P. They can't say it. They say Palestine. They can't say it. This is Arab land? What kind of nonsense is this? And why aren't we saying so publicly? Forty percent of Judea and Samaria, 100 percent of Gaza, was given over to the Arabs. That's where 99% of the Palestinians live. There's no occupation. They have their own parliament, schools, textbooks, newspapers, radio, TV, businesses, police force. There is no occupation of sovereign Arab land. I'm sick and tired of hearing this word. It's a lie, and we have to start saying so. <laughs> we have to demonize the monster terrorist in the Palestinian Authority, Mahmoud Abbas. He's a moderate peace seeker. He calls the Jews full of filth. He's a Holocaust denier. His own charter says he opposes a political solution. We must destroy and demolish the, Pal the Israeli entity. No Jew, he says, will be allowed in the Palestinian state. This is a moderate. He glorifies and has parades for Jew killers. His official uh, emblem shows all of Israel, all, uh, all of, the, of Israel with a Palestinian keffiyeh over it. <laughs> And he gives lifetime pensions to Arabs who murder Jews. <laughs> and yet, not only uh, do we not tell the truth about Abbas, let me tell you, when I met with President Barack Hussein Obama <laughs> at the White House, <laughs> he said to a group of us, you must talk to your friends and relatives in Israel. You must search your souls, he said to us, and see if you're serious about peace. Because I don't think you are. But Mahmoud Abbas, he said, is sincere about peace, and everyone knows it. That's what this enemy of the Jewish people in Israel said at the White House to us. This isn't secondhand. I was there. <laughs> so we have to make it clear that Abbas is a monster terrorist and not a, a, a peace seeker. We have to make it uncomfortable for college students and others to be supporting Mahmoud Abbas when he's this horrible. A Palestinian state? They were turned down the state eight times in the last 80 years, four times in the last 40 years. <laughs> this would simply be another Syria, Iran, or Korea, or North Korea. This will be a Hamas, Iran state. <laughs> <laughs> when I asked Prime Minister Olmert, why did Abbas turn down your insane offer of 97% of Judea and Samaria, half of Jerusalem, 3% more of Israel? Why did he turn it down? I asked personally Prime Minister Olmert. He said to me, Abbas said to me, you have to get rid of three clauses. One, we accept this was a Jewish state. I'm not signing that. Uh, two, uh, you can't, I can't bring refugees into, is into Israel proper. He said, I'm not signing that. And three, you have to get rid of the clause, no further claims. No further claims? That's why they're making the deal, so it's over. Omer told me this himself. <laughs> so Israeli leaders and Jewish leaders have to tell the truth about a Palestinian state, about Mahmoud Abbas, about occupation. <laughs> we Jews who love Israel must fulfill the very meaning of the word Israel. It means literally fighter for God, Yisrael. Fighter for God is what it means. 
for Israelis and today's American Jews to heed those appeasers, to pursue a vision of one-sided dangerous concessions and reluctance to use real military action where appropriate against evil regimes like Hamas, Hezbollah, the Palestinian regime, and Iran, whose goal is clear, murdering Jews and destroying the Jewish state. By refusing to do so is to renounce the very name that identifies our moral purpose. This war of the Arab war against Israel is not about land. It's about Israel's existence. That's why offers of land fail every time. <laughs> As Jews, we are divinely commanded in our holy Torah to pursue true justice, to fight evil, to defend those who seek our destruction, to defeat those who seek our destruction. We dare not flee from confrontation when the stakes are as high as they are today. We Jews did not come to Eretz Yisrael as colonialists. We came neither like the British imperialists nor like the French colonizers in Algeria, nor like the English and Dutch settlers in South Africa. We did not come like emigrants seeking a new continent, a new homeland. We came back to our ancient home as the inhabitants of a country who had been driven away from it by force. This is our homeland. Let's never forget it. <laughs> 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 and I'll end by saying, in every generation, as the Passover Haggadah foresees, enemies will rise up against the Jewish people, but each time we overcome our enemies and we prevail, we have always emerged to rebuild and become stronger than before. In the future years will be a time of regeneration, hope, new opportunities, and stronger Jewish communities. The Torah promises that Israel is the Jewish homeland and will always be the Jewish homeland. That's what the Torah promises. And unlike politicians, except President Trump, God keeps his promises. God keeps his promises. <laughs> so as the prophet Joshua says, be not afraid, for God is with you. The cause of Israel is moral and just. We must act and speak out with courage. Truth, justice, and God are on the side of Israel and the Jewish people. With your help, with the strength and the will of the Israeli people, with the strength and the will and the help of the Israeli Defense Forces, with the strength and the help of great and extraordinary leaders like President Donald Trump, and with the help, and with the help of Almighty God, new miracles we can't see will occur, and the people of Israel shall dwell in their holy land for eternity. Never again dare we be the shash still Jews, the Jews of silence. And as long as we speak out, as long as we fight, as the word Israel means, fighter for God, we the Jewish people, and we the people of Eretz Yisrael will prevail. Thank you very, very much. I'm always good for the seventh inning stretch. <laughs> <laughs> the Phillies almost won the World Series. I'm a Philadelphian. <laughs> now it's my uh, honor uh, to introduce by video, unfortunately, Dr. Miri Adelson, <laughs> who's going to be introducing our guest of honor, had to be in Israel today for personal reasons, which she deeply regretted that she could not break. <laughs> she always said to me, Mr. President, that if President Trump is gonna be there, 100% I will be there. <laughs> and yet something came up that she wasn't able to break. <laughs> so I'm pleased to uh, uh, introduce uh, uh, the great philanthropist, the great uh, uh, doctor of, uh, of addictive diseases, uh, my friend, one of the great Republicans in the United States of America, Dr. Miri Adelson will introduce President Donald Trump. 